Welcome to the 2021 Southampton International Boat Show. Now the yacht behind me is the brand new Della 42. Now this German brand has a reputation for producing very fast, very strong performance cruisers. We have regularly been overtaken by Dellas when we were cruising monohulls back in the UK. So let's go inside, have a look and see what we think. Welcome to our very last review for this particular series. I hope you guys have really enjoyed it. We are going to finish off with the Della 42, which is quite different to the rest of the boats that we've seen on this review series so far, because this is very much a racer cruiser rather than a cruiser that has good performance. So let's bear that in mind when we're having a little tour. The first thing that strikes me is just how wide and flat and open that transom is. That's really going to improve performance, particularly downwind. You can imagine that that wide flat transom and the underwater profile that comes along with it kind of acts almost like a surfboard. So you get this huge amount of speed downwind, it surfs down the waves and it should reduce that dreaded downwind roll because the wave should pass underneath the stern rather than hitting the stern like frankly they used to with the Ruby Rose. But before we go any further, I think we should take a look at what kind of performance you can expect from this racer cruiser. That is why you would buy this boat after all. So let's take a quick look. This is the polar diagram provided by Della. These are theoretical speeds. And it states that in 20 knots of wind sailing on a beam reach with a spinnaker, you should be able to achieve 10 knots of boat speed. Downwind, you're looking more like eight knots of boat speed and 20 knots of wind. Now, if you compare that to say the HANS 418 that we reviewed a couple of weeks ago, the polar diagrams are extremely similar. So the theoretical boat speeds are very similar between the HANS 418 and the Della 42. Theoretical, not real life. Probably also worth checking out the stability curve. The angle of vanishing stability on the Della 42 is about 125 according to this graph. Um, as a comparison, the HANS 418 ABS is just under 120. So that's an interesting comparison. Just as another comparison, our Southerly 38 had an ABS of 160, which admittedly is quite high. So let's get back on board and continue our tour. Here's a look at that open transom from a different angle. You can see those twin helms right there. I'm not sure if those helms are carbon. There are a lot of carbon options for this boat or whether they're just black. You've got all your instrumentation at the helms, which of course you would need in a racing boat. And all the lines do come back to the cockpit, but I wouldn't say that this is a boat necessarily set up for easy sailing. This is a boat set up for performance. So some lines come back to those winches under the spray hood, other lines come back to the winches further aft at the helm stations. The Traveller is situated in the middle of the cockpit, just board of the helm stations. So that is something that obviously would not be convenient if you were using this boat as a cruising boat, but that's not what this boat is designed for. Nice big instrument panel there for everyone to see so everyone can keep track of boat speed and VMG, wind angle, wind speed, that kind of thing. The cockpit is pretty utilitarian, safe and practical. You can see the traveler at the top of your screen there. You've got a narrow cockpit table and around the cockpit there are plenty of bars, grab bars to either hold on to as you're moving around or to clip onto. Plenty of storage underneath the seating as well. Let's head down the side deck now and go forward. You've got the general track there. Um, that I like how that is kind of tucked to one side. So it does leave the side deck clear. Only a very small amount of teak used um, on this boat, which we'll just get a glance of in a moment. And I like how the deck space is purely fiberglass. It keeps it really easy to maintain, easy to clean, and you can maintain that kind of sure footedness while racing up and down the side deck uh, sailing as well. You can option teak or alternatively a synthetic teak. And just a friendly reminder that if you are specking teak on your boat, then please ask where your manufacturer is sourcing their teak from. There are sustainable options, uh, so just make sure that the teak is being sourced from sustainable plantations. I think the teak we're looking at here is actually synthetic teak. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Onto the mast, we can see the running rigging leaving the mast, going aft and being held captive in those channels. They're completely covered and that makes everything really clean, not only aesthetically pleasing, but also very safe as well. And once again, those side decks are nice and clear despite the presence of those Genoa tracks. 
which along with plentiful grab rails would make moving around this boat while it's under sail pretty easy and safe. Okay, time to go inside now. Let's take a look and see what this Stella 42 is like on the inside. Very modern and minimal. I think that this is exactly what I was expecting, to be honest. I like how there are certain design elements like those curved covers to the side that kind of make this a little bit more unique than the average boat. I like the curved doorways. It's kind of modern without being too literally edgy. Not only does that look nice in my opinion, but also those curved edges to the tables, etc. like the nav station right there, they are less of a hazard when you are underway and perhaps not as steady on your feet as you might otherwise be. The nav desk actually converts from a nav desk to perhaps more of like a coffee table. You can slide it along to change the location and create kind of a bigger space. So that's really interesting and, and pretty smart, I think. Like a lot of modern designs of boats about this size, you don't have a dedicated nav station necessarily. Uh, it kind of works within the larger space of the saloon um, to create kind of one cohesive space rather than being separated. Um, I think I've got mixed feelings on that. I personally like a nav station, but I also think that it's very practical that you can have a multi-purpose space. So either way, I, I really like this anyway. Just while we're here, we've got a couple of different uh, teak and material options. So, I mean, if you don't like the blue and the oak, you've got a few different options um, that you can specify. I think that this is quite a nice combo. Again, I really like the curved design of these cupboards up here. You've got a shelf behind them as well for some additional storage or just displaying a wooden horse, for example. Uh, we've also got some port lights and some opening hatches as well. There's actually several opening hatches in the saloon galley area, which is, as you know, something that I always check for. And it would appear that they really have thought of everything because there's even a wine rack in the middle of the saloon table. I mean, if that doesn't convert you, then I don't know what will. Overall, I really like this space so far. It is light, it is airy, it is modern. It's got some thoughtful design features and it also has some unique features that I really like. And you can see some of the different material options demonstrated in this virtual tour, which I just got from the Della website. Overall, I really like this space. Plenty of seating area for guests, um, plenty of space to relax and chill out, somewhere to keep your wine. So far, so good. Taking a look at the galley now, I think that it's fair to say that this is quite a small galley. Um, it's got a top loading fridge, it's got an oven, it's got a sink that has covers on it that you can you convert to more bench space, which is good, but I mean, it's a small galley, let's face it. But it's a pretty similar size to the galley in Ruby Rose and we lived on that for five years without any problems. And by the way, from this angle, you can really appreciate how lovely those curved cupboards on starboard look in that continuous line. That's really nice, I like that a lot. Let's move forward now into the owner's cabin. Uh, this comes in two different configurations. You can have one with additional storage or you can have one where one of the storage cupboards is replaced by a small heads, a private heads, which I think personally I would be going for. No shower in there though, um, not a wet room either, so uh, just the heads and the sink. Nice though. Now, because I do love me some ventilation, I will be docking a point for just the one opening hatch in this cabin. Overall, I think this is a really nice cabin. I kind of like the, uh, the oak and the black combo. You've got a little bit of storage, not too much. You've got those reading lights and uh, each side of the bed has a little shelf as well, which could come in handy for extra storage. Um, and definitely anything you put in there um, will not be going anywhere, even in more lively sailing conditions. Now let's take a look at the main heads and shower room. This is actually opposite the galley. You have a heads and a shower. So this is essentially a wet room um, in its own private room, obviously with a door. And the door can actually be closed to block off the entire area from the galley and the saloon, which I think is quite clever. So within this area, you've also got obviously a sink and uh, some under sink storage. I really like that curved design of that cupboard that's um that's really pretty and you've also got a mirror so you, as i said you can kind of change the configuration of this area so that it is private 
and so that you can kind of close off both the sink and the heads or shower room um, from the rest of the boat. Um, otherwise you can kind of keep it open and the sink is open to the rest of the boat. Now the aft cabins are just about what you would expect. They're pretty small and cozy. They are literally just for sleeping in. So that's what you have to keep in mind when you're looking at these cabins. Probably quite comfortable, especially in a seaway. You could definitely tuck yourself in there and be uh, pretty secure. There's a little bit of storage as well in the form of some hanging lockers and a shelf with as we've already established, quite a substantial fiddle uh, to prevent anything from falling over. And you've got a porthole on one side and an opening hatch on the other. The opening hatch opens into the cockpit. You can either get two aft cabins, two quarter cabins, or one can be converted to storage. The engine is of course located under the stairs and it is a 29 horsepower Yanmar as standard. Some stats now before I give you my final thoughts. This Della 42 has a length overall of 12.84 metres, a beam of 3.91 metres. You've got three different keel options, which give you three different drafts. So a shallow keel will be 1.98 metres. The standard keel is 2.15 metres and the long keeled option is 2.38 metres. The displacement depends on the keel option that you choose. The shallow keel is 9,500 kilograms. The standard keel, so your standard boat, will be 9,100 kilograms. So the shallow keel is actually heavier than standard. And the competition keel, the long keel, is 8,700 kilograms. The standard sail area is 91.8 square metres. The competition option is 95.3 square metres. The typical sail away price, including VAT, is apparently typically £356,000 or thereabouts. There are, however, quite a few options for increasing the performance. So for example, you can specify a carbon mast, additional rig tuning options, a performance rudder blade, and you can even specify lighter weight interior materials that will, of course, increase the cost. So what are my thoughts on this boat? I must say I really liked this boat. I don't think that if I wanted a Della, I would go for a 42 because for me, it would be more of a weekend sailing boat, something that I would take out, race, perhaps anchor and spend overnight like apparently this couple are doing um, but I don't think that I would need 42 feet for that I'd probably be tempted to go for a small option that all being said I really like this boat I like the way it looks I think they've made an effort to make a boat that not only sails extremely well but also looks really beautiful outside and inside um, so I'm I'm pleased with this boat I would be perfectly happy to go for a sail on this boat spend a weekend on this boat and certainly if you are a super keen racer and you love that speed of performance, then why would you not consider a Della? So what do we think? What do we think of the Della 42? Look, deep keeled, fine hull profile, like this boat is really going to fly. Put a set of racing sails on there and the displacement means that you are probably gonna win a lot of races. Would we buy this boat? Well, if we wanted to actually scream across the Atlantic, yes, we'd get there probably in style and safety quite considerably for other boats of similar size. So yes, it is not gonna give you the luxury that you're gonna get in a big kind of like wallowy, large volumed southerly, but it's gonna get there a lot faster. So it's something actually, we really like the Dellas. Um, probably not for us as liverboards, but there are a lot of people who absolutely love these boats. They have a huge, huge following, a hugely loyal following, and they have a pedigree that basically means that, you know, these they'll be making these boats for the next 20 to 30 years at the least. Let us know your thoughts about Della. Give us a comment down below. And again, if you haven't already seen the series, there are a lot of review videos that we're putting out about monoholes, kind of giving you our thoughts on what we look for in a monohull. So I hope you enjoy this. Um, give us a subscription down below and we'll be back again soon. Goodbye.